Howdy ladies and gents, my name is Tom Gibson. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna share a little bit of how you can take a plain and ordinary voiceover and then process it through Adobe Audition to get a fuller, more professional sound. So if you're not interested in me walking through exactly what I do and you just wanna see what all of my settings are, go ahead and fast forward to this point in the video and I'll have that all up on the screen and you can take a screenshot of it and go from there. But stick around if you'd like to see my workflow from beginning to end in processing my voiceovers. So let's take a listen to the actual voiceover that I'm gonna edit here. When recording a voiceover, you want to start with the best possible audio before you even start processing it. So that means getting the highest quality microphone that you can afford and recording at a level that the meter is hitting about the yellow when you're talking. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is double click so it takes you to the waveform. This is what it is now. And then as I make changes, you'll see these changes happen down on the bottom. And I am going to first normalize the clip. I go to uh, favorites and normalize to 0.1 decibels. And you'll see what happens is it makes everything a little bit louder. It takes my loud peak which is right here and brings it to 0.1 decibels uh, because once it hits zero decibels it's peaking and begins distorting so it just raises the entire thing up to that level so the first thing I'm going to do let me pull up my presets and turn them off and the first one I'm going to use is the de-esser. The de-esser is taking rid of, getting rid of the little s -p -s -s sounds that I have going through here so if I go here when recording a voiceover you want to start with the best possible audio voice over, you can see that it actually begins to reduce those frequencies just in that little window of 3000 hertz at 12,000 hertz in the frequency um, a little bit. When recording a voiceover, you without it. When recording a voiceover, you with it. When recording a voiceover, you very subtle, but it, it, it takes the harshness out of that. The second thing I use is the graphic equalizer. You can see I'm just raising the frequencies on the higher end a little bit more to make it a little bit brighter from 2.8 kilohertz to 22 kilohertz. And so without it, when recording a voiceover, you want to start with the best possible with it, when recording a voiceover, you want to start with the best pop. So you can hear that subtle brightness that's brought to it. The next thing I do is the dynamics processing for the compression. And this is mainly the first aspect of it is just taking the bottom parts that are a little bit louder than the rest of it and lowering them down. Um, if I don't any put any output gain, you can actually see that happen in the bottom here. If I turn this on, it's basically taking everything and lowering it down so everything's more of an even level. But then I make the entire thing louder by about 16 decibels to boost it up. So here it is without the compression. When recording a voiceover, you want to start with the best possible audio and with the compression. When recording a voiceover, you want to start with the best possible Okay, and so dynamics is over here. You can see my, uh, my when recording a voiceover, you want to st what it's actually doing. Things that would normally be up here, it's bringing down, and then it's still louder because I did that 16 decibels. Um, I'm gonna bring that down, maybe down to 14 because I can tell it's already peaking quite a bit. Uh, maybe 15. Okay, when recording a voiceover, you want to start. That's good. So I usually stay between 14 and. 17 you can see like once you start getting to 20 uh, it gets pretty pretty chunky and a lot of this starts distorting so i'll stay 15. So close that out so next thing is the parametric equalizer in this case i'm actually uh get, getting rid of the more garbage sounding frequencies uh at around 120 hertz as well as around 500 hertz so let's hear without it when recording a voiceover you want to start with the best and with it when recording a voiceover, you want to start with the best. You can hear the clarity. And if you're not sure which frequencies to do exactly, what I'll do is I'll raise up those frequencies and sweep around and try to find the really nasty sounding ones like this. When recording a voiceover, you want to start with the best possible audio before you even start processing it. So that means getting the highest quality microphone that you can afford. And record so I'm going to bring that down to negative five. And then same with the 500 hertz. I'll kind of bump it up. Uh, you can narrow... You can narrow the band, like the when you bump it up, you can hear it. When recording a voice, that sounds really bad. And then you can narrow this, like how, how thick it is to kind of isolate the frequency you're looking for. So let's see. When recording a voiceover, you want to start with the best possible audio. So that sounds pretty bad. So I'm going to go negative six, and then I'm going to widen it out a little bit so it gets a little bit more of those uh, frequencies. So maybe three. Um, but that's how I kind of find them. Sweep it. You can even see that this it's peaking around right here, so those frequencies are a little bit louder. But those around 120 and around 500, 550 is going to be the, the frequencies that you kind of want to take out. 
So let's take a look at the next thing is dynamics processing. This is a gate and what this is, is it makes the quiet sounds quieter. And so like anytime I'm kind of inhaling or just these like the little space in between, uh, it's going to it's going to pull down that even more uh, until it reaches a certain threshold of volume. So you can kind of see at the beginning, you'll notice how uh, the amount that it's bringing it down is going to be pretty significant. When recording a voiceover, you want to start with the best and then at the end. So you can see it's starting to bring it down as it realizes, oh, there's no talking here. Let me bring that volume down. So these are the settings that I have for that gate. And then the next thing is a scientific filter. Um, this is just cutting out everything underneath a thousand or underneath 100 hertz. Uh, this is most of my voice is over 100 hertz. So this is like if there was any air condition rumble in the background or any other low frequency noises that maybe I didn't really hear, but it still muddies it up a little bit. This takes all of it out. So you won't hear much of a difference when you're listening to it. So this is without it. So that means getting the highest quality microphone that you can afford and recording and this is with it. So that means getting the highest quality microphone that you can afford. Maybe you can hear a little bit of the difference if you got headphones on, but it just cleans up the audio a little bit, especially after I've been processing and compressing a lot of this stuff louder and louder. And the last thing I do is to put in a hard limiter. Uh, limiter, basically you get to pick your frequency that you want everything to stop at. So in this case, um, I want everything to be cut off at negative 0.1 decibels because even though earlier when I normalized it, nothing went past that. Now that I've done all this compression, uh, some of them are peaking and you can see that it's peaked because this part's red. So I'm gonna go to this spot and you'll see, watch it peak. Getting the highest quality microphone that right there. But now let me turn on this limiter, getting the highest quality microphone and it keeps it from peaking and distorting and it stops it right at port one decibels. Um, so I do that just to, to make sure any little pieces that might have gotten past point one, uh, they don't end up going past that. So when recording a voiceover, you wanna start with the best possible audio before you even start processing it. So that means getting the highest quality microphone that you can afford and recording at a level that the meter is hitting about the yellow when you're talking. So I've got all of these in order across the top from left to right and from left to right. Take a screenshot of this so you can try it out for yourself. And once you're done with this, you can click apply and then it actually makes those changes to the waveform and you can actually see it reflected back in the multi-track editor. I would like to give a shout out to Mike Russell's YouTube channel because uh, I took a lot of what his presets were for his voiceover and then I modified it for my own voice. He's an audio engineer and YouTuber, so check him out. So if you'd like to stay in the loop for any upcoming videos that include filmmaking tutorials as well as some education stuff because I'm a teacher by trade um, and some vlogs here and there, go and hit subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions about editing your voiceover and hopefully I will see you in the next video.